What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, so over the years, Marvel has released different types of stories. You know, like you have the Ultimate Universe, which is the answer to the question, what would it be like if superheroes came into existence in like the modern day? And of course you've got classic Marvel and you've got things like Marvels, you know, like M-A-R-V-E-L-S, which is like, hey, here's like this idyllic perspective of like the rise of superheroes. And then we have Ruins. And Ruins, <laughs> <laughs> it's a Warren Ellis story and holy hell ruins is like the worst case situation, right? Like, like you sit down and you ask a question you're, you're like, Hey, how bad could things possibly get in the Marvel universe? And then like you ask that question and somebody says, well, here, read Marvel ruins and you'll find out like it is, it is bad. Like it is, it is so messed up. So this all comes from the perspective of a guy named Philip Sheldon. What this does is it initially kind of gives us like this opening perspective, right? Like it kind of starts with the idea idea of the Avengers in the sense that what you had is you had Tony Stark who was going to put his mind to task and he was going to like basically end the whole like conflict in Vietnam and all that kind of good stuff and like much like the main Marvel Universe he was you know he went overseas he was captured and he basically created the Iron Man suit and he came back to the United States the difference here is that he and the other Avengers basically helped to try to allow California to secede from everybody and they failed like it was it, like they literally tried to help like like an insurrection basically in the United States and it all came crashing down and the result was that Tony Stark alongside all the other Avengers basically died. But it gets crazy. It gets crazier. Okay, so from here, we switch over to Philip Sheldon going to a bar. And I remember he's documenting how, quote unquote, everything went wrong, about how everything went all screwed up. But we get these small little tidbits here and there. For example, you pick up with um, like the atomic truck crash that basically gave Daredevil his enhanced senses when it blinded him. And in ruins, it kills him. Like he just dies. Like it's like he dies in a pretty horrific way. Uh, basically just like radiation and chemical burns end up killing him. But Philip Sheldon goes to this bar and he basically encounters like Wolverine but Wolverine like with regards to how his how his whole situation works instead of him having adamantium and then basically having like adamantium claws that give him like all kinds of crazy abilities he has those but like it's basically poisoning his bones so imagine what you saw in the film Logan but imagine that it's always been that way and not only that like like he's got like these nasty scars and like these protrusions and everything like that and it's kind of crazy because the local barkeep kind of uses him as like a, a sort of side side attraction basically like like, you know, hey man, like, like, dude, show this guy your scars. Like, show him how screwed up you are, and I'll give you a drink. And like, like he does. Like he, he shows, you know, Philip Sheldon how screwed up he is. And so like the barkeep gives him a drink, and, and like that's it. Like that's that's all you get from him. But it's like small things here and there. You know, like for example, like uh, Black Panther T'Challa actually joined the Black Panther uh, organization, and he alongside like Bobby Seale and Huey Newton are just serving prison, serving time in a San Francisco prison. Hawkeye was shot in the head. Scarlet Witch was actually the one who betrayed the Avengers. Like she turned state's witness. So the idea was that she was part of the Avengers team originally. But when the federal government was trying to find a way to basically crack down on the Avengers and end the insurrection, like she basically sided with the federal government. She told them everything they wanted to know. And the result was that during the whole point where the Avengers were basically like helping to launch this secession in California, their Quinjet was shot down by the federal government using a Patriot missile. And that's what killed them all. So like Scarlet Witch was the one that got them all killed. But from here, like we switch over to uh, to Nevada, basically like to a, a nuclear testing site. And this is bonkers. So what we end up finding out here is the federal government has basically built like a giant encampment here and inside this encampment is the Cree race and or at least what's left of the Cree race like those individuals who traveled to earth and it's really really screwed up because the adults know why they're there because like they were captured you know by by the American people but like kids are born inside this camp and they don't know why they're there and so Philip Sheldon basically makes his way in after being allowed by the uh by the various soldiers who of course are wearing radiation suits and we end up finding out that he's actually meeting with uh with Marvell of the of the Cree race now in the main Marvel universe the way this played out is Marvell was tasked by the supreme intelligence to lead an invasionary force against the planet Earth, and then ultimately Marvel turned against the Kree and became a superhero on Earth, and that's what led to like Yon Rog, the enemy of Marvel, basically becoming you know the two of them coming you know becoming mortal enemies. But basically, he was a superhero on Earth, fighting alongside the Avengers and fighting on behalf of humanity against the Kree. In this story, it doesn't happen that way. Instead, what we end up finding out here is that the mission parameters of the Kree were still the same, in the sense that they were tasked with traveling to Earth. The difference was that along the way, they basically encountered the Silver Surfer, and the idea here was that the Silver Surfer you know, Norn Rad, after being turned into the Silver Surfer by Galactus, had basically gone insane. Because of the fact that he was so used to being a mortal being who basically breathed oxygen, once that transformation happened, he literally lost his mind in an effort to try to breathe again and like tore open his insides and just died of shock in space. And so because of the fact that he was still like imbued with all this cosmic power, the result was that
that when the Kree warships showed up and then hovered there for a minute or two, the power cosmic eliminated their cloaking system, which revealed their existence to the world. And in response, the United States started launching nuclear missiles into space. And the result was that like all these Tomahawk, uh, Tomahawk missiles just like bombarded the Kree ship, which sent it crashing down to earth. And those who survived, which only like a 10th of them survived, those who survived were taken captive and to be as much like an example as an experiment. And they're literally just like thrown, you know, in, in Nevada and like this nuclear testing ground. So basically they're all irradiated with cancer and like they're, they're all going to be dead within like 30 years. The other half of this is that Charles Xavier has become president of the United States and like he lives in seclusion. Like you never see Professor X, which I imagine is a kind of an illusion of sorts to FDR in the sense that you never really saw FDR in a wheelchair. You'd see him like sitting down, but you wouldn't really see him rolled out in general, you know, in the general public in a wheelchair. But the idea here is that Philip Sheldon travels to the capital of the Washington DC, which is essentially just like completely and totally collapsed. Like the, the city is just a, a place of destitution and squalor. Like it's, it's absolutely heinous. But what he had done is he had secretly written to Nick Fury of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now the crazy thing about this is that much like the main Marvel Universe, Nick Fury's seen and done it all. In the main Marvel Universe, in, in World War II, Nick Fury led the Howling Commandos and then they came along the, uh, came, like they came into contact with the Infinity Serum. And the result was that the Infinity Formula basically granted them immortality so long as they consumed it on a, like I think it was a yearly basis. The issue and, and what we found out in Original Sin was that the Infinity Formula eventually ran out. So all these young versions of Nick Fury that we saw running around the Marvel Universe were actually life model decoys. And the real Nick Fury was just an old guy sitting on a satellite that nobody knew about that was completely cloaked from all forms of detection. And so like that blew, kind of blew the top off the whole Nick Fury thing. But in this story, like he's, he's seen and done it all. Like from his perspective, he's like, look man, like everything went wrong. Like we don't even know where it went wrong, but like the Avengers are dead. The mutants are basically like, like experiments that are done. Uh, like, like all kinds of things are messed up. One of the other things that happens too is that like Jean Grey just kind of like wanders up to the two of them and is like, like literally like pimps herself out basically. And is like, Hey, I'll do anything you want for like 20 bucks. And it's like, God, this is screwed up. Like, man, it's like, this is, this is absolutely messed up. Not only that, like the indication here is that she's underage. So like, it's, it's in a, it's like in a really dark spot, but of course, Nick Fury, like when, she, when he realizes what she's about, he literally just caps her. And like, that's the end of Jean Grey. And then from there, he basically turns it on himself. And he's like, dude, I've, I've seen so much, so many screwed up things. And I've seen how, how like messed up this place is. I don't want to be a part of it anymore. And like, that's the end of Nick Fury. And no, so not only that, like what we end up finding out here is that Galactus exists in this universe, but Galactus is just like floating out in Mars. Like he's dead. We don't know what killed him. We don't know what happened to him. We just know he's not there anymore. Like he's basically just out of the picture. And so at this point we switch over to Philip Sheldon meeting with, oh my God, Marlo Chandler. Holy cow, Marlo Chandler. And, uh, and wow, Damon Hellstrom. Those are names I haven't heard in a long time. Marlo Chandler was this chick. She was like super athletic and like a personal trainer or something like that. And, uh, and she was the girlfriend of Joe Fixit, who was the alternate personality of the Incredible Hulk when he was when he was taking up residency in Vegas and didn't want anybody to know who he was when he was just like the Grey Hulk. When it came to Damon uh, Damon Hellstrom, okay, so the way this worked out is in Marvel Comics, you've got like different versions of Satan, basically. You've got like Mephisto, you've got actually Satan himself, like a being who operates as Satan more or less. But the idea is that Damon Hellstrom would be like, like Satan born in the mortal world, kind of like an heir to the throne or something along those lines. He goes all the way back to like Ghost Rider and I, like, I want to say his Ghost Rider volume two, issue number three in like 1973 or something crazy like that. He goes way back. But anyway, like, like we don't even really get a glimpse of Damon Hellstrom. It's just like this chick who's just like, my son's going to be the Messiah one day. And so like things are totally screwed up here because Marlo is basically like a smack addict, a junkie. But not only that, we actually get this crazy story from Rick Jones. So in the main Marvel universe, the way the Incredible Hulk story played out originally was that you had the uh, gamma bomb that was going to be tested by like Bruce Banner and these guys to see what sort of energy sources could be used for like with like gamma radiation. And Rick Jones was just this mindless, stupid kid who was literally playing on a banjo on in a car at like the testing site because you know I guess it kind of made sense with like all the horns and the countdowns and hey this is a cool place to practice music and so like he's so he's, he's sitting in that, that little area and Bruce Banner realizes he's there so Banner goes running out to the testing site and uh, pushes Rick Jones out of the way Banner's caught in the gamma bomb explosion and the Incredible Hulk is born in this story the event plays out the exact same way the difference here is that Banner becomes a Hulk kind of but not in the same capacity what ends up happening here is that like once he's basically hit with like all this energy from the gamma bomb he literally just turns into like this giant mass of tumors and it is it is hideous like it is it is 
dark and twisted. I mean, like his eye pops out of his head and like tumors just start exploding out of him. And so like he's giant and green, but he's just like, it, like bones protruding, just like this giant hulking mass of just tumors and cancer. And like, like the idea, or at least the, the way it's explained by Rick Jones is that like they keep him alive and he's actually like in a vault, like he's in a vault under a lake and they, they keep him alive. They test on him. They experiment on him. We never see him after this. Like we never actually find out what happened to him. We just know he's there, or at least Rick Jones says he's there. Not only that, of course, Rick Jones is basically just like drinking morphine by, I mean, just like this jar of morphine, which of course is designed to basically, you know, keep cancer at bay. But like things are rough because like it's stuff like the Punisher, you end up having like Philip Sheldon who's making his way and uh, the Punisher was basically just gunned down. Now, again, we're not really given an explanation there about what happened to him. I mean, we assume he was killed by criminals, which makes the most sense. Like you've got, you know, Frank Castle, he's like, I'm going to wage a war on crime. And it lasts like that. Like it, it lasts almost no time at all. And he's taken out lickety split. And like, that's the end of him. But then you pick up with like one of the most screwed up parts of it. So after this whole experience, Philip Sheldon's on a plane and basically he's sitting by, a, you know, next to a woman that he calls Miss Darkholm, who of course is Mystique. But like, as soon as like, when he sits down, she immediately starts going crazy, right? It's like, it's like the scene from Total Recall, you know, two weeks, two weeks, you know, like, like just start like, you know, just starts going nuts. And, uh, and like her face starts distorting and everything. Come to find out what had happened was that she, she developed the ability to shapeshift, but because of the fact that she had taken on like the different forms of so many people, it basically gave her multiple personality disorder and her head literally just like caved in and, and just killed her on the spot because she wasn't taking pills that were designed to keep that from happening. Not only that, like once he and everybody else get off the plane in an evacuation, what you end up having here is like this guy who just kind of like walks up and then he's pushed out of the way by um, by one of the security guards only for us to find out that what had happened is that this guy had this sort of device around his body that was designed to basically like keep his magnetic powers at bay. Of course, this turns out to be Magneto, but when he was pushed out of the way, the dampening field was damaged and the result is that like his magnetic powers are completely uncontrollable and it rips out everything like like it, it goes nuts like the iron in people's bodies is like ripped out of their bodies entirely it kills them on the spot fillings are torn out of Phil, uh, philip sheldon's mouth like guns go flying towards him and then eventually like the entire plane just comes to like get literally gets pulled in by the magnetic abilities of of magneto and it just like explodes on him and kills everybody in the immediate vicinity now of course like like philip sheldon bailed out like is like really fast so like, he got out of there while the getting was good but then at that point you switch over to texas and this is when we find out how dark professor xavier is as president President. What he's been doing here is that unlike the main Marvel universe where he basically takes mutants and then brings them to the Xavier Institute and teaches them how to use their powers. Instead, what he does is he sends them to like this top secret facility, more or less, that's ran by Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin. And they're just like experiments. And so it's it's crazy because stuff like, like uh, Cyclops, because of the fact that his eyes are, are, you know, emit optic beams, they didn't know how to control it. And so they basically just like blinded him and singed his eyeballs shut. And it was just like, damn, I mean, like, like literally melted his eyeballs close. Like it's, it's crazy how this whole thing's happening. Happens. Like Kitty Pride had tried to escape because she can phase through things and she got stuck in a wall and lost three feet of intestine. Um, like Nightcrawler's just cannibalizing himself. And like Quicksilver lost his arms and legs because the momentum and the friction in the air as he moved, well, like his, his arms and legs couldn't handle it. And like the crazy thing is that Xavier will come down there and Xavier will just talk to them, like, or he'll just stare at him or he'll talk to him or something like that. But like the implication here is that like things are not the way they're supposed to be. They're, like they weren't supposed to turn out this way. That somehow everything got screwed up. And so what you end up doing is you end up finding out that like, for example, Donald Blake is not Thor in this story. Instead, he's a guy who claims to have seen Thor and he's literally holding like a regular hammer. He's basically a maniac who had essentially just gotten high on some shrooms and uh, never recovered. And so they just kind of chalk it up to him just being stuck in like a hallucinogenic state forever. Emma Frost leads this crazy like religious organization that actually goes through and like adopts the kids of its members and then performs like these brain experiments more or less to like awaken their psychic powers. But she's basically just like a crazy chick. And then you have Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze actually kind of has the funniest story. Like none of these stories are really funny per se, but like this one kind of is. So like Johnny Blaze, <laughs> Johnny Blaze is like this daredevil, right? Like, like much like the main Marvel universe, he's like this stunt man daredevil kind of character. What happens is that in this whole like traveling carnival act, he's called St. John and he just performs like these crazy stunts. Well, in this one, it's like the last stunt he'll ever perform. What he does is he douses his head in gasoline, sets it on fire, and then like goes to perform a stunt only to die in the process and just ride off into the desert. And like, that's the end of him. But like, that's kind of the tribute to the whole like, you know, flaming head of Ghost Rider. Like it's, 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 
it's so screwed up. But it's kind of nuts because then what you have is you have Philip Sheldon who actually ends up in New Orleans, I think, and starts to like dream of this time when everything was different. You know, when the world isn't the way that it is right now. Like he dreams of like a better tomorrow. And it's this whole idea that what he basically ends up dreaming is the Marvel story by Mark Wade and Alex Ross, where it's like this age of heroes and like everything was the way it was supposed to be, you know, and like Captain America is a champion of the people and Tony Stark helped to form the Avengers and mutants and all these different beings are like saviors of the world, you know, helping to protect from like these various threats that exist out there. But like that doesn't exist. And so what we do, you know, for this last little tidbit of the story, we pick up with Ben Grimm. Now, this is kind of the coolest thing because we basically get this explanation of what went on with the Fantastic Four. So in the main Marvel universe, the Fantastic Four, as we know, uh, Reed, Susan, Johnny Storm, and then of course, Ben Grimm had basically taken off into space. They were hit with cosmic rays. They fell back to earth. And of course they gained their powers. Instead, what ended up happening here is that in this particular story, or at least in this particular universe, that when Reed Richards wanted to take off, when he was like, hey, we want to use this vessel and fly into space, Ben Grimm's response was, this thing's not ready. Like you do not have maneuverability on this vessel. Like you're literally just a rocket firing in a forward direction. What you need is the ability to like maneuver and move around so that if you start running into problems, you can evade them. But Reed Richards didn't want to do that. Instead, what he wanted to do was immediately get into space and chart as best he can. Now, the indication here was that this was in response to the Russians, or at least uh, the idea was that it was basically the great space race and they wanted to get people into space before the Russians. And so instead of uh, instead of having Ben Grimm pilot the shuttle, they basically got like Victor Von Doom, who there's really no indication here that he's like Dr. Doom dabbling in like magic and mysticism. Instead, he's just one of the people who worked there. But when they fly the shuttle into space, they're hit with cosmic rays. The difference here is that Johnny Storm, he does set on fire and he burns to a crisp. Like Susan Storm is, is really just kind of like there. Like um, she was basically in visible, turned her eyes to glass and like she was completely and totally blind. No one knew she was there until like she tripped over her brother or, you know, or, or somebody tripped over her. Uh, and then it, like Reed Richards was basically able to stretch and then Rick and Mortis set in. So he's just like this elongated corpse more or less. And the craziest thing was Dr. Doom. They don't show you what happens to Victor Von Doom. But the, the, the idea here was that he had basically just turned a mineral. Like he turned inside out. That like his organs were on the outside of his body and then they became like a hardened mineral. And like he just somehow landed back on earth or something along those lines. But it's crazy because Philip Sheldon has basically been dying this whole time. And you end up finding out the reason why he's dying is because Peter Parker had like exposed himself to, you know, this really screwed up virus in an effort to like gain powers. And the result is that like his physical form is all like screwed up and, and terrible and like disfigured. But because of the fact that Philip Sheldon had met him when he was younger and then shook the hand of Peter, the illness passed on to him, which has basically been killing Sheldon the entire time. And then the result is that Sheldon just dies and the story ends. That's it. Like it's, <laughs> it's the least grand ending ever, but it's like the small things in there, like, like Amor the Enchantress, who in the main Marvel universe is designed to be like a very luscious and full figured woman. She's an adult film star in the Marvel Ruins line of comics. And like, I think she kills her manager or something like that. There's a lot of things that you don't learn though. Like, I don't think you ever learn about what happened to Loki. Um, I don't think you ever learn about like how Asgard works or anything like that, but it is, it is like, this is like twisted. This is just depressing as hell. But anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think down in the comments section about this whole story. Uh, if you are new here to Comics Explained, <laughs> make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. Uh, if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like. And I, I, don't, I don't know nobody who would like, I mean, I, I guess it is kind of a cool story, but this is one I highly suggest you read because it's really immersive. Like when you get into it, it's just like, damn, like it's like, it makes you want to know, like, like give me more. Like, I want to know more about what happened. Like as dark as it is, I want to know more about this universe. It's pretty screwed up. But uh, anyway, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end and I will catch you all later. Peace.